Hello, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Today we're going to do two things. We're going to focus first on our TOEFL uh, practice. I'm sharing a link now with you in the chat in Microsoft Teams. If you want to go ahead and open up the browser, open up the page at this time. Again, it won't be open until 8.15. We'll start uh, right at 8.15 as always. And I'm going to go ahead and upload now also the audio to today's review. I'm going to open or upload this to Microsoft Teams under the folder temp. So give me one second here. I have some technical difficulties. One second here. Try something else. Uh, try to focus again on your note taking. All right. Try to utilize some of the strategies, abbreviating the words, focusing on the um, content words. Uh, does anyone want to share what approach is working for you uh, with? Uh, with regard to note taking, anybody want to share your experience, your thoughts about your strategies that you're using to try to improve your listening? In the night, well, for the listening tool, I'm trying to use, um, I have to say, uh, headphones and to be uh. and concentrated. And in the night, I'm trying to see how to, no, sorry, to watch movies in English. Ah, okay. Yeah, great. That's uh, that's really important. Anything that you can do outside of the strategy, any opportunity you have to listen and get exposure. Um, hopefully, your podcasts also are helping, right? Hopefully, you're finding, um, you know, you're finding content and podcast information that you like to listen to on topics that have, are of interest to you. Hopefully that is uh, working. Um, anybody else want to share this morning? Teacher, me. Uh, for example, when I'm doing the topic, I don't like, like to take in notes because to make in, I distract myself. Like taking the notes and I don't know if I lose like the information. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, I can't do that. Here, here's the here's the thing, and I and I understand the challenge. Um, and what I want for you to think about or consider is perhaps the the way that you're taking notes. Perhaps the way that you're taking notes is causing a, a distraction more so than just taking notes. Um, uh, it's, you know, it really depends, I guess, on the topic, on the subject matter. I know for myself, if I'm listening to anybody, even in English, my native tongue, and if I'm not actively doing something, my mind drifts. I start to think about if I'm just listening, we're not doing anything, right? There's a lot of research that supports the this idea of what's called active listening, and that is you doing something, right? That you're when you're listening, you're actively, in this case, writing something down in order to understand. Uh, you know, to better, to recall, right, the information. And, you know, when you are in class, right, when you're in a class and you're listening to the instructor speak, which many times this is the context, right, this is what you're listening to, you know, you want to find a way to be able to take notes for and be able to distinguish certain pieces of information. You're not writing out everything. You know, taking notes shouldn't mean writing out every single word or trying to recall every everything that the person is, is saying. 
It's really about trying to distinguish the most important pieces of information. And that's what I want you guys to think about when you're practicing these listening, these TOEFL listening is, um, you know, try to find the key points, the key ideas. And when they start to compare and contrast certain things, or they'll say something like something is better than something else. Right. Those are key words for you to say, okay, I need to write something down here. This is important. And, you know, many of these types of questions that you're getting exposed to are very similar. They're, they're almost exactly the same. They'll say, okay, what was this lecture mainly about? Okay. So when you're writing out the details you you're listening for the general idea you're also listening for details and you're listening for when they say something is better or worse or or you know faster stronger you know you're listening for those types of distinctions that make up most talks most most lectures in a classroom so you know i i want you to Take these reviews and try different things. If one way doesn't work for you, right, first of all, give it a, a chance because sometimes it takes a while to develop and and it is harder, of course, when you're learning a language and you're trying to also, you know, uh, take notes. So it's just just a matter of practicing and experimenting and reflecting and you know, if if you find something that works, then you you stick to that, right? But sometimes it's not as obvious. It's not like one day, oh wow, I found a strategy. Now I just did twice as good on my TOEFL score. It's a gradual process, guys. I just uploaded the audio. Can you see the audio in the chat? Can you download it? Can you guys uh, download the audio? Those of you who want to download the audio? Yes, yes, you can? Okay. All right, so for those of you who want to download the audio, go ahead and download it. We'll start at 8.15 as always. The audio, let's see. Listen to a con. The audio is about 50 minutes. Just make sure that you submit your results before 9.15. Yes. In the, uh, in the question, it says that it doesn't accept answers. Like, I can't get into the question. Right. It'll open at 8.15. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you are just have it up and ready. As soon as 8.15 rolls around, then just refresh your browser and it should appear. Teacher. Yes. The another thing that I understand you is that... I have to only like to to note the keywords, like to guide me. Right. So, right. So we talked about three key strategies, right? That you can try when you're taking notes. All right. So, what's the what's the first strategy, or what's what's one strategy that we've talked about for taking notes? Teacher, the audio is in temp, right? Um, I just uploaded it to, sorry, I thought I had sent it. I just uploaded it to the chat. Do you guys see it? Yes. Can you download it? Try, try to download it if you, and if somebody okay. can confirm and let me know if you can download it. Sometimes I get errors when I share folders or files. I can see it, teacher. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Just let me know, guys, if you cannot download the file for me i get an option to download so the strategies guys what's one strategy for uh, taking a toefl that we've talked about you remember strategy one of the strategies we've talked about we can just write uh, okay go ahead i think i don't know if that was fernando or adan Yeah, but um, yeah, I think just writing short words and not the entire words, but uh, 
short word with a continent, just the continent, or uh, just the things that we can identify the word more easily. That's right. So we can abbreviate words by omitting vowels, right? So, um, so instead of writing smart, we can write smart like that, right? There's, you don't have to worry about spelling and grammar, punctuation, right? When you're taking notes, this just has to make sense for you. So you can abbreviate words. What's another strategy? Mm, symbols. Symbols, that's right. So you can write symbols like arrows, circles, right? You can connect ideas. One's better than the other, faster, right? You can use symbols instead of words. What's a third strategy that we, we talked about? Keywords. Keywords, and I'm going to be specific here and say content words. So it's not just any type of word, but it's nouns, verbs, and adjectives, right? So you don't write sentences. Don't write like you're uh, trying to capture every single idea that's being discussed. You write keywords, but specifically content words. You're not going to write articles like the and a and and. You're not going to write prepositions. You're going to write adjectives and nouns and a lot of times and verbs. So a lot of times the adjectives will modify the ver the nouns, right? So you can put together with abbreviating the words and using symbols, combine those three strategies. And that's a, a good approach, I think, for... Or really, I, I think this is a good way to develop your note-taking ability because you can write down more ideas quicker. And again, you don't have, you're going to, I want you to become familiar enough with the listening that, so you realize there's some information that you don't have to write. There's some that you do and others that you don't. Because a lot of times they're, they're just, they're explaining the same thing in two or three different ways. All right, guys, we're almost up here. It's 814. Go ahead and uh, get ready to refresh. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to play a second of the audio. If you could just tell me, please, if you can hear it. Conversation between a student and... Can you hear it? Yes, it's all right, go ahead and refresh your screen at this time. I'll give you just a moment or two. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and now begin the TOEFL review.
No es nada. <laughs> Denle las gracias a, okay, a Susi guys. que dio la idea. Sorry about that. Did, did were you guys able to hear the video? I had some technical problems at my end. Did you hear the entire audio? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Okay. Did did you hear? Did it repeat part of it in the middle of it? Did it repeat a section? Go on, teacher. No sé si hubo un problema por mi lado, como se cortó y regresó el audio y todo, pero no sé cómo fue para ustedes. ¿Si ¿Sí fue bien o, o no? Como es... que se salió la llamada, creo. ¿Pero ya escucharon todo el audio? Sí, ya escuché. Ok. All right. Um, yeah, it was weird. I just, I don't know what was going on here. I'm having some, I think Windows just updated this morning on my computer, and I don't know if that's causing a problem. But anyway, um, all right. So go ahead, guys, and upload. Make sure you've submitted your responses, please, to forms, if you haven't done so already. And let's see here. I'm going to open up Flipgrid, and I want to talk today about uh, the activity we started yesterday, and we're focusing on an interview, setting up questions, and answering those questions as a famous person. Now, I want to take a couple of examples, and, and I want to give everyone an opportunity If you feel after we talk today in class that you want to redo your video, I encourage you to redo your video. I am very, I want to be very specific about how you create the questions. I'm actually focusing more on the interviewer than the interviewee. I'm focusing more on how you set up your questions than how you are actually answering the questions. So um, I want to first ask everyone, what do I mean by setting up a question? To say something before the question related to the question. To say something before the question related to the question. To say something before the question that relates to the question. All right, so let that yeah, sink. Like, like yeah. an introduction. All right, so, all right, so let, I want to play, um, I just looked, I was listening to Adan's uh, video, and I'd like to play his. He did a very good job with it. I want everyone to listen to his video, his, uh, as an interviewer. And I want you to define three parts or three sections of his audio. All right, let's take a Hi, listen. Hi, everyone. Let me, uh, let me share my screen again so I can get the audio. All right, so let's listen to Adan here. Hi everyone, it's Adam here and today we have a very special guest. Uh, we're going to be interviewing one of the best singers in all over the world. And we all know uh, the Beatles, for example, and, and everybody knows his songs. I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be interviewing John Lennon. Uh, John, I hope that you're fine and I would like to ask you some questions. I hope that you can answer all of them. So yeah, let's begin. And the first one, the first question that I would like to ask you is, uh, why did you decide to become a singer? Because um, we all, or some people, uh, when, when we are kids, uh, we feel that we can be uh, anything we want. But why did you decide to to take that that path and the other the other questions the other question that 
I would like to ask is, uh, well, it is related to India and your, your trip to India. Why did you go there? Uh, I mean, Indian people were very, very excited when you, when you went there and in Indian people, uh, yeah, were very, very excited and and actually, we know that you uh, you produce some songs in India, but is there a purpose behind behind your trip? And also, uh, how do you compose your songs? Uh, as a singer, maybe you get inspiration from someone or something. Uh, I mean, for example, you, uh, we all know that Yoko Ono is always right next to you, uh, whatever you do or whatever you go, uh, she, is, she is next to you. And maybe she could be uh, one of the inspirations of you. But, uh, but yeah, what, um, how do you compose them? Uh, and also, uh, as a last question, as a last question, I would like to ask, why do you consider that the Beatles are uh, the Beatles is the best band in the world? Uh, I hope that you are fine. Uh, I hope that you can answer all of my questions. Uh, so, so that's it. Bye. All right. So, how guys? How would you define the th the three, possibly four sections of? Adan's um, interview delivery. How would you define those three or four sections? What do you think? Any ideas? First, uh, the introduction of the famous person. All right. So now let's let's go back to Adan starts to speak here. here. And today we have a very singers in. All right. And goes, let me go up to answer that. all of them. So yeah, let's begin. All right. So about the first 32, 33 seconds, Adan is and introducing uh, his speaker. Now. I have I didn't ask anyone to create an introduction, but he does a very good job in including an introduction. And I think it's great if you want to include an introduction. But I'm not requiring an introduction. All right, so this is one section. This is one part of uh, Adan's delivery. What is a second part or or section of his? Uh, his interview delivery. Any ideas? Can you repeat the question, Peter? What is another, in addition to the introduction? An introduction is one part of his delivery. That's correct. Now, can you identify two more sections of his delivery like like things that he's break down what he's saying he's basically got three parts one is the introduction and there are two others that he does well in his uh, delivery can you identify the other two sections of his delivery the, the other um thing that he was talking about it was about india no the songs that he that John Lennon made in India. All right, but not like so, all right, not so, my question though is not so much about the content or the subject matter, is the type of speech, right? The introduction, we're not mentioning the subject. We're just saying it's an introduction, right? There are two other sections that are also um, part of this assignment that he does, that he includes in his delivery. Can you identify the other two parts or sections of his interview uh, delivery? Any 
Any ideas? Let's listen here. And the first one, the first question that I would like to ask you is, uh, what did you decide to become a singer? Because All right. So how would you identify that section? What I just played the next about 10 seconds. Uh, teacher, the volume uh, was kind of low or was not working. The, uh, yeah, the sound, the audio. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Um, we all them. Can, can you guys hear it now or or not? No. No. Okay, let me stop the screen share. Start the screen share again. All right, let's try it again. So I'm going to start the uh, audio right after the introduction. Now, identify the next section that Adan's about to do here. So yeah, let's begin. And the first one, the first question that I would like to ask you is, uh, why did you decide to become a singer? Be All right, did you hear that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How would you define that section, that those 10 seconds or so? The body of the interview. All right. Anybody else? Any other ideas? You could label it the body of the uh, interview, but more specifically, what did he just do? Say the first question. That's right. He asked a question. So after his introduction, he followed up with a question. He followed up with a question. Now, let's begin the third section because he starts right into the third section here after the question. Because um, we all, or some people, uh, when, when we are kids, uh, we feel that we can be uh, anything we want. But why did you decide to 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 take that that path? And the other the other questions. All right. So how would you define that next section after the question? What do you think? <laughs> what do you guys think? After the question. How would you define the next section? I don't know what teacher. What is one thing that we have to include that we talked about that we need to do before the question? The setup. The setup. The setup. Now, what you're seeing here with Adan, and, and again, he does it very well, but he does the setup after the question. And again, there's nothing wrong with doing that. What I'm asking everyone to try to do, though, in this activity is to try to present the setup before each of the four questions. You're going to have different setups. You're going to have a setup for question one. You're going to have a different setup for question two. You're going to have a different setup for question three. And you're going to have a fourth setup for the fourth question. Now, what is, why, what would be the advantage of setting up a setup, including a setup, before the question instead of after the question? Any ideas? Any ideas? Think about what's going on in the interview. Put yourself in the interviewee's shoes. Put yourself in the famous person's shoes. When someone is setting up a question, what is it? Providing, what is it doing? Teacher, like before 
each question that he's doing, she he is like introducing the question. Right. And how do you think that's going to make the interviewee, the famous person, feel in the moment they're doing the interview? Mm, the questions. Oh mm. Go ahead. What do you what do you think? How is what how the, oh. is the person gonna feel? The person is going to see that he knows about about him. Okay, very good observation. Yes, they're going to know that this person knows something about about the famous person. What else? Anything else? Also, I think that the person that is being interviewing is uh, is feeling that the interviewer is not going too fast or too directly uh, to the point. Exactly. I'm not sure. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you sit down, you imagine, just put yourself in the famous person's shoes and they, and they sit down and, okay, maybe there's an introduction, but then boom, there's a question, right? Right off the, right directly, right? So when you're setting up the question, part of it is, yes, you're showing that you know something about the person. And you're providing some context. The second is the person is feeling a little bit relaxed because they're getting and they're getting familiar with the context of what's about to be asked. So the person can probably either anticipate the question or at least have a good idea where the question is coming from. De donde viene la pregunta, right? So where where is it coming from? And it makes it more comfortable to answer the question. All right. Now, the third thing I would say, because the way that Adan does, and he does a very good job again, but when you end, when you present the question first, and then you offer the setup, quote unquote setup, or you provide context, it's hard to know when the, the famous person, in this case, should answer the question, right? Uh, when you ask a question and then you start talking, uh, there's like, well, when do I answer the question? So sometimes it's, it, it, it uh, has a better flow if you set up the question and then you pose the question because when you finish the question, then you're done as, an inter as the interviewer. Now it's the famous person's turn to speak, right? If, you were, if we were doing this in real time, right? If we were doing this really face-to-face. -face. But... This is what I want to share with you guys. Uh, Mirna, Hello, everyone. I'm Jack. Mirna does a good job as well. Okay, and a welcome to my interview. Today we have a special guest. She is a Colombian woman. She's a singer, actress, dancer. Uh, All right, again, so she does a good introduction. Introduction is not required, but of course, if you want to do an introduction, go for it. Uh, she's ambassador of the UNICEF. And she's a lot of important things. So, our special guest is Shakira. All right, now, this is her introduction. Now, notice what she does next. First of all, Shakira, thank you for being here with me in my interview. I know you are an um, occupied woman and maybe you don't have a lot of time. So, this is the reason that I will ask you for questions. I know that you are collaborated with. Now, starting there, I know that you are collaborating with, right from there. A lot of important singers. So, um, I know and we know that your fans have loved it, but I would like to know, how do you feel when you collaborate with some important singer? All right, so that is a good example of setting up a question. She had an intro, then she set up the question, providing some context. I know that you collaborate with people and this and that. And then she presents the question, right? This is what I would like for you to do for each of the four questions. Now, I think it's interesting, uh, Mirna, or uh, yeah, Jackie's um, uh, delivery, if I remember right, I think the first two questions, she sets up the questions. This, the last two questions... She provides context after the question, which was interesting. <laughs> um, 
what I want to encourage all of you to do is to set up each of your four questions before the, before the question, right? To include the context before the, the question, All right? This is the, the idea. I really want us to focus very specifically on trying to set up these questions. And for our purposes, you can write out the question if you want and read it off your notes. But try to set up the question in your own words by creating the language. Try not to write out your setup. Again, the setup can be brief. It can be one or two sentences, right? It doesn't have to be really long, but it really opens up the question. It provides context. And you might find that in some of your cases, when I was looking at your some of your questions and leaving you feedback, in some cases, I, I'm looking for questions that are a little bit more specific. How can you be more specific? Think about your setup. There are probably some key words in your setup that you can use in your questions to make it more specific. If you ask, if you ask a question, why did you become a pro professional basketball player? For me, that's a little bit too general. Why? Because you could ask that question to any basketball player out there. What you want to try to do is ask a question that is very specific to the individual, that is unique, that is a question that you couldn't, couldn't ask anyone else. This is going back to what do you know about the person, right? Think about a, an experience, an achievement, some sort of historical context about this person when you're thinking about your setup and your questions in order to Try to make the questions more specific. All right, this activity is really a focus on creating questions, creating specific questions, but in this case, creating questions that are unique, specific to the famous person. So I know some of you have uploaded your videos. I'm asking everyone and giving everyone an opportunity to redo your videos if you need to, because I'm looking very specifically at the setup and the question, a different setup for each question. If you include an introduction, great, but I'm not even requiring an introduction. All I'm looking for really is the setup and that the setup comes before the question and again, you have a separate setup for each of your four questions. Be careful with open and closed questions. If I say, um, how many Academy Awards have you won in your lifetime? Is that an open question or a closed question? Uh, closed question. It's a closed question. Or just giving a number and that's it that's right how many movies have you been in is that an open question or a closed question closed question closed uh, i've been in 20 movies okay y luego que okay puedes hablar más sobre eso right you need open questions Open questions, right? What year were you born? Okay, that's closed. That's an easy example, right? But any question that begins with how many, how often, and many times any questions that begin with what, right, or which, those are also, they tend to be closed questions. Which is your favorite movie, open or closed? Which is your, closed. It's, closed. A, it's a closed question. So take a look at your questions, guys. Try to create open questions. Try to be specific and think about your setups. Right? This is what I really want to focus on. I'm, I'm be, I'm be, I want to be really specific in this, um, in this activity because I want to show you the importance of setting up uh, questions right? Providing context. And I think by thinking about the setup, it's going to help you think of more specific questions. That's my feeling. That's my hope, right? Is 
that by creating a setup, it's going to help you be more specific. And whenever you're asked to do interviews, this is a technique that is, I think, going to help you make a better interview. You do projects in other classes. You are, are going to probably have to do some interviews. So a lot of times it's best to try to keep the interview as conversational as possible so that the person you're interviewing feels relaxed. If they feel relaxed, they're going to give you better information. The last thing I'll say, remember when you're answering the questions, you don't have to answer all of the questions. You choose. You're going to have four to five minutes to speak. You choose which questions, which question or questions you want to answer. But pay close attention to how you're organizing your ideas. You don't have to repeat the question, right? When you answer, just just speak. Just just talk about the question, but you don't have to say, well, okay, to answer your first question, no, just go right into uh, your ideas and uh, try to organize your ideas in a coherent fashion. All right, so any questions, guys, about this activity, this speaking activity? I know we're out of time today. Tomorrow, I want to do one more listening activity and then give you the rest of the class to finish this activity and work on your podcast. Um, I want I, the reason I'm trying to do three audio or listenings is because I know sometimes technology is um, a challenge for some of you and even for me too. And so I want to make sure that you get at least three in this week uh, so that in case you miss one, you still have other opportunities. But any questions about this activity, the interview uh, activity that we've been working on this week? Yes, teacher, I have a question. Yes. Uh, for example, in my video, uh, when I'm answering the question, the questions, uh, I repeat the questions while I'm while I'm talking because, like, I want to sound like more organized, like because I say the answer and then. I don't like to say the second answer without like maybe saying, okay, the answer to the second question is, or like that, because I think maybe sometimes you can get confused about which answer is which one. So should I do my video again or I can leave it like that? All right. What I would suggest, and I, I haven't uh, listened to all the audios. I haven't listened to yours specifically, but what yet, what I would say is that, I don't have a problem of you referencing the question. And when I say referencing, I mean using the same words that are coming from uh, the question. What I would encourage you to try to do is to reference the question without asking the question in the form of a question. Does that make sense? Like actually saying the question, repeating the question. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. So again, you can reference it. You can use transitions, right? And and use keywords that are coming from each of the questions. That's great. Yeah. That's fine. Teacher. Yes. Uh what if I actually uh upload my video but uh I I mentioned that the questions ya me mato okay. <laughs> no, no, no voy a matarte. Uh, the, the, here's the thing. I haven't listened to all of the uh, videos on purpose because what I, I listened to a couple and I wanted to give you some feedback and you decide. Uh, I am providing feedback and trying to clarify what I'm looking for. And it's up to you to decide if you think that you're meeting the requirements for the assignment. If if you feel that you have met the requirements for the assignment, fine. If you feel you need to redo it, I would delete it and redo it. But I'll leave it up to you. Mm, okay, teacher. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Nope. No. No. All right, guys. No. We'll, we'll stop there for today. I hope you guys have a great day today. And tomorrow we'll do our final 
TOEFL practice, and we'll have time to complete this activity if you need it. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. 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 Thank you.